to it. When you run these plays, you can't just run throughout the play and be a robot. You got to try to find gaps in a play to make plays. So boom, peep number 11 right here. What's telling you right now to not stop right here and hold this seal right here to the paint? It's little opportunities right here throughout plays that you as a player got to recognize in practices so that once you do get in these sets, you get in the game, I know how to counter the set or know when there could be a gap. The another thing I noticed. Start this game off. Once again, they're still not sharp with their communication. So you can see this as a player that's off the ball and be like, okay, let's run this set back once again. Notice me right here on the screen in this action and look for me on the seal. So that as an off ball player, you can't just let it happen. You got to also recognize it and then tell your point guard because your point guard may be the person running it. Peep this weak side though, right? Miss a little gap. Now you're seeing they already end up scoring this bucket, right? But I want you to notice what could have been. You got to find opportunities in the play to make this play. So now I really want you to notice, boom, number 11 right here. Instead of coming up to this top, because in this set, they probably got to end up reversing that ball over to the other side. What if you just stayed right here in this mid range? Because you notice your defender never even left to go to you as well. He's still playing the paint. So you got this pick and roll going on. So instead of going there, you stay right around that free throw line area. It puts you in a position where you could catch and be one step away from getting that reversal or step away from being at the rim. And so say he stayed at this little free throw line area, he would have been, boom, been able to catch it one step or one dribble and already be at the rim. Because there's a little gap, but now he ends up going high. So he gets the bucket still, but it's just going to make the game a little easier. Mm. Now pin downs, pin downs, pin downs. I want to talk about how you angle him and where you set him. So boom, notice this right here. Setting pin downs, right, or like these cross screens, whatever you want to call them, you kind of want to set them a little higher than you think you should because you got to let that player come off that screen and be able to actually curl, maybe step in a little bit into their shot. And also by doing that, they could get that step in and that defender could be in more so in that trailing position when they're coming off. So you kind of want to set this a little higher because if you don't set it high enough, they'll be able to boom, get right back to a good position where they can recover. And by the way, make sure you subscribe, like, and turn on notifications because we drop breakdown videos daily. And if you want to catch my breakdowns live, make sure you go hit that link in the description. Go follow, and let's get right back to it. Mm. Now, pick and rolls, right? The only way you're going to put pressure on this player playing the drop is if you actually allow this roll to happen. So that's why it's important to come off these screens and have good pace. Because you have good pace, you wait for this roll, and then by waiting for the roll, you got one player behind you already trailing. So this really puts that player right here playing the drop, make them say, okay, I got to play a two-on-one. Whereas if you just come straight off the screen, it's like you're just playing one-on-one, -on -one and they don't really, they're don't really, they not really forced to make a decision. Because essentially, this player is no longer in the equation. Maybe. Another, another situation... Like I was telling you before, where you can't be a robot within a play. So you got 11 coming up to set the screen, right? Or 31. He sets the screen, but if he was really paying attention to what was going on, he'll realize that his defender was hard hedging. So this is where it comes in. You got to set these screens and be able to see two at once by using your peripheral. Instead of just looking at this player right here, looking down this middle so you could see where he is and see what your defender's doing. And then if, you pe if he peeped that, he would have not have set the screen. He would not even have touched him. He would have just, boom, slipped and went to the rim, right? You've got a whole lane right here and a whole lot of pressure to put on these two players down here. Mm. Hey, bro. Sudoku so, so right here, but he be clearing this out. His seals, anytime he gets in this paint area, boom, you out the way. And this is a great way to set this action because say you do got this big right here who's guarding him, play him on the bottom side, boom, firing straight down. But then he sets his cross screen underneath the rim, and then he just clears him out the way and gets his seal. Bro, peep that shoe right there, though. Peep that shoe right there, though, all right? You got to do it on UConn with no shoe on right now. And that's not the person you go attack on the other end. I ain't going to lie. You see a dude with a shoe fall off or whatever it might, might be. 
you go and attack that player because I ain't showing you no mercy. You're the other team. Why, why the fuck would I show you mercy? And so, like, how is you supposed to guard if you, boom, swing this to the player who has him guarding him, which is dude right here? How are you supposed to guard him? That's great activity on that switch. That's great activity. So, boom, you got a shooter coming off the screen. 11, you got a shooter coming off. You make this switch. His hands are active and his feet were active. And since they were both active, he discourages any passing lanes that he has to start and delay the pass from being made. And by delaying those passes from being made, it allows his teammate to be able to get in good position on that inside to make a play on this pass right here. That's the key with activity. And a great pl another player you see do that all the time is Draymond Green. Anytime a switch, anytime anything he comes up, hands active, everything active, just to discourage any lane and give his teammate a little more time to be able to recover to the player that they need to get to. Hmm. Boom, right there. That's why you need a floater. Let's be honest. We all don't want to get in the lane and have to hit somebody, go through contact every time we want to be able to finish in the paint. We don't want that to happen, all right? And there's times where it's just simply, it's not the smartest battle to take on. Because say we're guards, maybe 6'3", 6'2", six, 6'6", six, six, six foot, maybe even players smaller, and you're going against players who have maybe 8 inches, 10 inches on you with another 40 pounds, let's be real. We don't always want to take that on. And even bigs yourself, that's a whole lot of contact to be coming at you as well. So just get a float game. It's gonna make the game a whole lot easier. And if you really do work on it, it'll damn near feel like a layup. And it'll probably actually end up being a higher percentage shot than a contact layup, so. Mm. Hey, hey, he was about to slam that shit. I, you see how far that ball when he tried to slam that shit. But his pace off the ball is so good. I'm pretty sure he's entering the draft as well. This is the type of player that is going to have a spot on a lot of teams. Because, like, I, like I've said before, by playing by the odds, 80% of the time, you're not going to have the ball in your hands. So how are you going to maximize that 80% of the time instead of always being in the gym and working on that 20% with that ball in your hands all the time? And a player like Hawkins, he knows how to move off the ball. And on top of that, he knows how to actually control his pace off the ball, which is something players aren't well at doing. I think they said that he's worked with Rip Hamilton. So, I mean, he definitely showed him some shit. And then you're going to see more of it as well, so... Minimal movement will make you quicker. But notice that front foot, right? That front foot, that foot replacement. So instead of trying to get in the split stance right here and taking the step forward, you drop that foot back. Because dropping that foot back would actually allow you to use that front foot as a load step and then be able to take yourself forward. Instead of trying to take that foot, front foot, and take it forward and try to start off that back foot, but you're not going to be able to get good force off that back leg. So you've got to be able to drop that foot back, boom, and then you strive forward. Because that, that little less movement is going to give you even more force to get you further downhill. If you don't want somebody to blow by you, and you don't want to get maybe even taken out the game, don't let, don't let the player guard and reject that screen. All right? Because they reject that screen. Where is your next level of help? All the way down here, if it's coming from this wing. And if you want your teammate to come over and help you, all right, you could come over and help. But boom, he's going to step in, then kick to the corner, shot. And that's where I was saying before, X rotate. X rotate that. So now you, you he helps you, now you help them. But boom, that doesn't happen. The help comes from the weak side, and that rotation is just way too long. And this is kind of in the range where San Diego State begin to get their groove. Hey, bro, he be shit strong as hell, bro. His limit in the NBA, his ceiling, will be as, as good as he could defend. And I'm talking about not just inside, but on the perimeter as well. If you can't guard the perimeter, it's going to be tough to be able to make it in today's league. Mm. Boom again, once again by Hawkins. Not even just off-ball movement on offense, but off-ball defending 
when he's on defense. Because a lot of people like to get in these situations where they're chasing people over the top of screens and then try to stay on the inside, like I was saying before with Alexis Morris. You can't stay on the inside if you want to chase somebody over the top of a screen. You will get hit. So, boom. Instead of trying to stay on the inside and be, stay between him and the rim before he gets to that screen, he gets to his outside. So, even though he's not in position to start, he goes up and then he goes over. And then he gets to, gets to his spot. And boom, San Diego State started to make their little run, right? They started to make their little run. And that's what I was saying before, bro. I hated how this game transpired because the script writers didn't do a good job, if you ask me. They did not do a good job. The game went the same way as the women's game did. Boom, you start the game. The team got a double-digit lead, like 15 points or so. And then between like what was the women's third and fourth quarter and the third quarter, really. And now in the middle of this second half, they started to make a run to close up that gap. And as they closed up that gap, it got closer to crunch time. They expanded it. The game went in the same momentum, bro. The script writers did not do a good job. You should have put a little more attention, you know, like closer closer of a game. Maybe some lead changes or something like that. Or not no big lead in the middle of that game because, you know, it's just the same shit. I was watching. I was like, I have seen this maybe like four or five times in this tournament already, bro. It's not that. Come on, man. Do a better job. He knows what set's coming. He knows what's about to go on. Changes his pace. Boom. And then he gets this curl. And then throughout the entire time coming off that screen, he controlled his pace appropriately and gradually improved his speed as he got off, got to certain areas. Notice as his play starts, he's slow. He's relaxed. Now he gets to a jog. And since he's relaxed, his defender's late. Then he gets off these screens. He, adds a, he hits another gear. Then he gets into his curl. Boom. Knockdown. Mm. He tried to get that spin all he could, but he couldn't. Notice he gets left and then watch his front foot and watch that. Watch where he places it on that outside. If you really try to get into somebody and split their body with this right here, most times they're going to be able to boom, spin right off of that. Or if you try to put that elbow right on their back on that left side, they're going to spin right off of it. But he makes sure he gets in a good spot to where he blocks that spin off and keeps him in the same spot instead of allowing him to spin off his body. Now he has to work through that. Boom. 100% smothered. Mm. Peter drop covers. Sudoku, right? Peep him right here. You leave any small guard or any guard in general with a little slither room to be able to split that screen, they're going to go and split it. So as a big coming up in this area where you, if, you do, if you're trying to hedge, just show and get back, You've got to step up to a point where you can be able to, one, close that gap up and be at a gap away from the ball so that you can be able to recover laterally so that they can't turn that corner and just get straight to the rim. Because you see him step up right here. Boom. He's more on that right side. He sees that little gap. Boom. He just splits it, gets straight to. Then boom, gets a knockdown, hits that shot. And that's all I got for this game. So...